Question one. This question is about equilibria. 1.1, give two features of a reaction in dynamic equilibrium for two marks. So two features of a reaction. Obviously, it's a reversible reaction in a closed system. You need those two features in order to achieve dynamic equilibrium. But they're not the answers. Because once you've reached dynamic equilibrium, you must have already had a closed system and your reaction must have been reversible. So don't put those as the answers because they're what you need to achieve a dynamic equilibrium. But what are two features once a reaction has reached dynamic equilibrium? And those features will be uh, the forward and backward reaction uh, occur at same rate. That's a long-winded way of saying you have the same rate of reaction in both directions. So that might be a nicer way to say it. And the other thing is, therefore, the concentrations ooh, of, um, I can't spell, can I? Con oh, my gosh, what the hell's going on here? The concentrations of reactants and products remain unchanged. Cool. So they're not equal. Don't make the mistake of saying they're equal. You can have a higher concentration of reactant than product, but it stays at that exact concentration once equilibrium is reached. It doesn't mean that the amount of products or the concentration of the reactants and products is equal. Okay, let's move on. 1.2, a gas phase reaction is at equilibrium. When the pressure is increased, the yield of product decreases. State what can be deduced about the chemical equation for this reaction. So let's have a little look at that, right? Let's let's let me write down a reaction. This is for this 1.2. So for example, you could have methane. This is just an example of a reaction and will help me explain it to you what's going on. So you can have a reaction with methane and water. And this is going to form carbon monoxide. By the way, that's supposed to be a reversible symbol there. I've not done a very good job on that middle arrow, have I? Right. Uh, we're doing, we're dealing with equilibrium. So, okay. So, um, in this situation, how many moles of pro uh, product and reactant are there? Well, I've got two moles of reactant and I've got four moles of product. Why four moles? Because once I balance it, I'll need three of those to make up for the H2 and the CH4. So I've got four moles of product and two moles of reactant. When the pressure is increased, so when we step the pressure up, what do you know? You know that when we increase pressure, Le Chatelier's principle says the equilibrium will shift in the direction of the least moles. So what we can tell from this reaction is as the uh, amount of product decreased, the equilibrium must have shifted this way to the side with the least moles. So it tells you that the reaction we're dealing with is just like this reaction where we have more moles of product than reactant. So what can we learn about this reaction? We can learn that there are more whoa, moles. You can say molecules, but there are more moles, molecules of product. And that's going to be in the gaseous phase. Uh, it, yeah, it's got to be gaseous to affect the pressure or to be affected by the pressure. So more moles of product, that's what we learned. Okay, Koki, 1.3, carbon monoxide and hydrogen react to form methanol. I can't really read this, I've got the sunlight blaring on my screen. Carbon monoxide gaseous plus two hydrogen molecules gaseous. A reversible symbol goes to methanol gaseous. 0.43 moles of carbon monoxide is mixed with 0.860 moles of hydrogen at equilibrium. The total pressure in the, oh, sorry, at equilibrium, the total pressure in the flask is 250 kilopascals, and the mixture contains 0 0.110 moles of methanol. First of all, calculate the amount in moles of carbon monoxide present at equilibrium, then calculate the partial pressure in KPA of carbon monoxide in this equilibrium mixture for three marks. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the old ICE. So I'm just going to rewrite out this equation and this is quite similar if you're doing KC and you just asked for amounts of things at um, equilibrium. I use the ICE table. Um, you can just do it in your head, to be honest, but a lot of people find using the ICE kind of table the best method. So I'll, I'll, I'll do the ICE method. Oh, my days. This is quite disgusting. Right. So what is the ICE method? Well, I stands for initial. 
moles, uh, C stands for the change in moles and E stands for the moles at equilibrium. So what were the initial moles of carbon monoxide? They were 0 0.430. And what were the initial moles of hydrogen? They were 0 0.8, gosh, this is getting messy, 6, oh, I could have done this nicer. Uh, what about the initial moles of methanol? Well, at the start of the reaction, there wouldn't have been any methanol. We haven't reached equilibrium yet. But once we reached equilibrium, it tells us there were 0 0.110 moles of methanol. So we can now hit the change. So you do the reactants first and the product at equilibrium. And then your next step is to fill in the change. So what was the change in moles of methanol? Well, that would have been 0 0.110 because it went from 0 to 0 0.110. So it changed by 0 0.110. But what did the hydrogen change by? Well, what we do is we look at the ratio and we say, right, the ratio of hydrogen to methanol is 2 to 1. So the hydrogen went down by double that because the ratio was two to one. So the hydrogen went down by zero to two O. And that could tell me, not that the question wants it, but if I wanted to know it, that would tell me how much hydrogen I have left, wouldn't it? Because once you remove 0 0.220, we'd have 0 0.640 left. Okay, let's look at the one the question's actually asking us about. So we had 0 0.30. Of carbon monoxide. Now the carbon monoxide reacted in a one-to-one -one with the methanol, so it means that it changed by exactly one-to-one, -one. so it changed by 0 0.110. So subtract that from 0 0.430 and you get left with 0 0.320. So that is your moles of carbon monoxide at equilibrium. Good. Right, next bit, we need to work out the KPA. And in order to work out um, the partial pressure, we first, uh, what I would say is first work, if you're asked to work out the KPA of a particular substance within a reaction, first work out mole fraction of compound or the gas. So we want to first work out the mole fraction. And then our second step, secondly, we want to uh, multiply mole fraction by total pressure. So if you want to work out the individual pressure of one of the gases, multiply its mole fraction by the total pressure. Let's first of all work out its mole fraction. What fraction of the gases at equilibria were um, carbon monoxide? So let's work out the total. The total moles were 0 0.320 plus 0 0.640 plus 0 0.110. And that equals 1.07. That's the total moles. Oh, man. I hate it when I write like this. It is so disgusting. That's the total moles. Let's work out the fraction of those moles that was carbon monoxide. Well, it was 0 0.320 over the top. And what we're going to get, if we divide 0 0.320 by 1.07, we should get the mole fractione, which is 0 0.299 on my calculator. Or if we round it, round it, get 0 0.3. We like that. OK, but you can just keep this all in your scientific calculator so you don't need to be rounding on the way. It gives you a much more accurate final answer. So second, let's that's the mole fraction of carbon monoxide. 0 0.3 of the moles were carbon monoxide. As a fraction, where one's the whole. So we're going to times that now, 0 0.3 by the total pressure. And that was 250 kilopascals. And that results in 74 yikes 0.8 kilo. Pasquales. So 74.8 kilopascals. And that is our um, KPA. So that's our answer here. Boomy, boomy. Right. Um, let's go on. Give an expression for the reaction constant for KP. Exactly the same as KC. You're going to do reactants. Sorry. You're going to do products over reactants. So what we want to do is KP is equal to CH3OH. Put a line underneath, by the way, we need uh, concentration brackets there. Um, of course, with gases, it's pressure, still carbon monoxide. And then we're going to put hydrogen here. The only thing we need to add here, the only complication is there are two hydrogens. 
So we put to the power of two there, and that is your expression for KP. All right. Um, in theory, I should put a little P here, just so we know that we're talking about pressure. Boom. Let's move on. In fact, I've made a little mistake. I have just spotted. Can you spot the mistake? Those of you that are familiar with KC and KP, can you spot my mistake? <clears throat> what I shouldn't have done is put square brackets. They do not like that because the square brackets mean concentration rather than dealing with the pressure. And concentration is for solutions and not for pressure. So what I want to do is put rounded smooth brackets. Okay. And on the mark scheme, they will not accept square brackets. Let's move on. Okay. So that's your correct answer. Okay, we're nearly at the end of the first question. Two more parts to go. So 1.5. A different mixture of carbon monoxide and hydrogen is left to reach equilibrium at temperature T. Some of the data for this equilibrium are shown in table one. We've got partial pressure CO, 125 kPa. Partial pressure of methanol, uh, CH3OH, is 5.45 kPa. And then KP um, is 1.15 times 10 to the minus 6 kPa to the minus 2. Calculate the partial pressure in kPa of hydrogen in this equilibrium mixture. All you have to do here, guys, is um, CH3. I've got to rewrite that all out. So we want to write out the expression again. So we're going to rewrite out the expression. No, not with that. We're going to rewrite it like this. And then we're going to do H2. We're going to put to the power of 2. And that equals um, 1.15 times 10 to the minus 6. All we need to do is rearrange this. If we rearrange this, we will get the exact same thing. Oh, my gosh. So much better to type it. All we're going to do is swap the places with the KPA times 10 to the minus 6 equals um, H2 to the power of 2. Now, what else do we have to do? So I need to put those numbers in. This is going to be 1, 2, 5. And over here is going to be 5.45 for the carbon monoxide. The only other thing I need to do, I need to get rid of that little 2 there. So we're going to square root all of that. And that's going to then square root that. And that's going to get rid of that. And we're going to be left with our KPA for hydrogen. So we're going to whack that into the calculator. And when we do that, we get 194.7. Boom. Good. Like, share, subscribe, leave a comment.